I've heard some presidents say that before. You know? <laughs> I don't get into that one, right? Yeah. <laughs> better not. Okay. <laughs> let's let's go to the next one. So so first we had yeah that's 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 the that's the uh, uh, grasshopper. But then the, then then he brought something called flies. Let's go to the scripture Exodus eight verse twenty. It says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh. Lo, he cometh to the water, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Else if thou wilt not let my people go, I will send swarms of flies upon thee, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, and upon thy houses, and upon the, uh, of the Egyptians, shall be full of swarms of flies, and also the ground whereon they are. And I will sever in that day of the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there, to the end that thou may knowest that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. And I will put a division between my people and your people. Tomorrow this shall sign shall be. And I'm going to stop right there for a second. Uh, again, we see Pharaoh going down into the water of the Nile to worship his god Apis. Apis, uh, the father of life. Question for verse 20. Why does God deliver people? Why does God deliver people? Why does He deliver people? Why? Huh? That's what it says right there. So that they will worship Him. He, he, he proves Himself to you so that you can come to Him. You know? And that's what He was trying to prove to the, even, even to this, uh, uh, even to this uh, Pharaoh. Now... I found a mistake in our Sunday school book. Uh, verse 21, it talks about swarms, the orob, O-A-R-O-B. It, it's translated as a mosquito and also diverse sorts of flies. Now, our lesson, Sunday school lesson, said that they had a god called Beelzebub. Now, I know what Beelzebub is. Does anybody know what Beelzebub means? It's the Lord of the flies, but it said it said that they it said that the, that was the that was the the God that Pharaoh was worshiping. Well, Beelzebub is not; it's a Phil Philistine god. Okay, so the, I like finding mistakes in our books. You know, it's a Philistine god. So nothing wrong with it because in Second Kings uh, one, two, and three, it mentions Beelzebub. Uh, it means Lord of the flies or Lord of the heavenly dwelling. Originally, the name of the Philistine god, Baal, meaning Lord, in, uh, and was used in conjunction with the descriptive name of the specific god. The Septuagint renders the name Baalzebub and as Baal Muain, or Baal of the flies, God of the flies. Baal means God, or gods. Okay? Now, how many people in here have ever been uh, on a on a creek at night in a boat <coughs> and got swarmed by flies. You gotta cover your mouth with something because if you breathe, uh -huh. it goes in here into you. You know, I've been there, my dad used to take me frog digging at night. That was a lot of fun. Scary. It what? Very, very scary too. Huh? To go frog legging? Frog digging. What's a frog digging? You get frogs and you bring them home to eat them. Uh, <laughs> you got a pitchfork and you, you, pitch and you, and you have a light and you shine it on the bank and you and you slowly go up to them and you give them <laughs> <laughs> and then you skim them and, and fry the legs up and it's really good stuff if you're if you're if you're, if you're texting them. <laughs> no, it's good. It's How many people in here have eaten frog legs before? Okay, all right. I'm not the only one. Uh, <laughs> But it is a scary thing being swarmed by swarms of bugs. How many people here really like bugs? No. no. I don't like bugs at all. No. And here, these people were surrounded by these bugs. And, uh, okay. Let me continue reading here. Verse 24. Well, I haven't got there yet. For what Goshen, Goshen, I don't, the, I could not find a, uh, a definition for the word Goshen other, other than that it was the place of the Hebrews, verse 22. The place of the Hebrews. Uh, and he said that, he said, uh, in that day, Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there, to the end that thou might know that I am the Lord 
in the midst of the earth. So basically, it swarmed everywhere but Goshen. So the people of God were protected. You know, God puts a hedge of protection around us. Yes, if we follow him, we call on him, he puts a hedge of protection. We can have bombs on our right and bombs on our left. 10,000 fall on the right, 10,000 fall on the left. But none shall come nigh me. That's right. right. Because that's what the word of God says. Mm -hmm. You know, but, yes. I got a question. You asked a while ago, did we get, have we ever had lies? I mean, what's that about? Why did we get lies then? Why do we get lice? Okay, I can tell you that too because I studied it. <laughs> lice eat hair follicles. Yeah. So if you have hair and this bug comes near you, he's going to grab onto your hair follicles. People that have their head shaved don't get lice on their head, but if they have hair under their arms, they're going to get lice if the person gets around you that has lice. I mean, you said God protects his people from that, and my question is... Oh, it's why we as Christians get lice. Yeah. Well, that's, the, that's probably the curse of Adam, you know. Yeah, okay. uh, I imagine one day in the garden they got along with us, you know. Uh, I, 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 I just had to ask you. Yeah, it falls on the just and the unjust. But I'm just saying that there is a hedge of protection that God can prepare for you. In the midst of in the midst of a plague like this, God can protect you. And also give he can also give you knowledge and wisdom that you may not need to go to the grocery store and buy some of that soon food that they got to get through your lives. Just that easy, right? And throw away all your clothes. <laughs> Glory to God. Okay. How much time I got? I still got time. Alright. So he said he was going to separate them and he was called to cause a division. And that word division is pedut, P E D U T. And it means a distinction, a redemption. So he says, I, I'm going to redeem these people. These are, these are my redeemed people. Is why they didn't get attacked by this particular uh Play. And also you got to realize they were not worshiping these gods. That's right. The other ones were. Uh -huh. To the point of where they said this must be the finger of God coming down, you know. Uh, now, where did I stop at? Okay, verse 24. Verse 24 says, And the Lord did so, and there came a grievous swarm of flies into the house of Pharaoh, and into his servants' houses, and into all the land of Egypt, the land was corrupted by reason of the swarms of flies. And Pharaoh called for the Moses and Aaron and said, Go, you sacrifice to your God in the land. And Moses says, It is not me so to do, for we shall sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. Lo, we shall sacrifice the abominations of the Egyptians before their eyes, and they will stone us. We will go three days' journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God, and he shall command us. And Pharaoh said, I will let you go, that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only you shall not go very far. Entreat for me. And Moses said, Behold, I go out from thee, and I will entreat the Lord that the flies, the swarm of flies, may depart from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people tomorrow. But let not Pharaoh deal deceitfully any more in letting the people go sacrifice to the Lord. Okay. So here's a word in verse... 24 it says they were they came grievous swarms of flies grievous uh, the Hebrew word is kabed it numerously severe heavy heavy and it, then it also goes on to say that the land was corrupted and if you look up that word it's shehat and that it means marred spoiled or wasted the whole land was wasted because of these because of these uh, these swarms of flies. We haven't even got to the grasshoppers yet. Which that's going to be <laughs> so God knows how to make some people uncomfortable. Yeah, He does. You know, when you're a sinner, God makes you uncomfortable. I've heard people say that. Well, I don't want to go to that church because I feel uncomfortable in that church. I wonder why. Guess what? God makes you feel uncomfortable when you're not going when you're not doing right. And we as Christians, if we feel comfortable, we sh we really should feel uncomfortable when we're when we when we sin. That's we right. We should feel uncomfortable. That's the Holy Spirit saying, "Hey, you know, you know." Just think, he can send flies down on your house. You know? <laughs> uh, verse 26, oh well, verse 25, Pharaoh just says, go, get out of here and take the flies with you, right? <laughs> I have enough of these flies. The land was spoiled. And then Moses replied, it, it is not me. And I don't know if your version says something different. Uh, it probably should, because I, I did not understand that. Uh, 
But the word meet here is kun, K-U-N. It means established, prepared, prosperous. But he was saying it's not prosperous for us to go sacrificing your gods. Because they said, Egyptians are going to call it an abomination if we go around sacrificing cows and they worship the cow, right? Or they worship the bug, right? That we can't sacrifice our whatever God wants. You know what? They didn't even know what they were going to sacrifice when they went into the wilderness. We find that out later because the Torah had not been written yet. The only thing they had was the, was the handed down word from Abraham when God spoke to Abraham. So, so that had not been done. So when they was, wanted to go to the wilderness to sacrifice, they were having to seek God and tell, to have God tell them what to sacrifice. And we find later on that God did speak to Moses and told him exactly the plan that was the shadow and picture of things to come, which is Jesus Christ. Okay, Because when I read the Old Testament, I believe it's all a shadow and a picture of Jesus Christ. Now, I believe they really happened. These things really did happen, but they were prophes prophesied you know, that, that, that Jesus would come to be the great deliverer. Uh, they said, we shall go into the wilderness, the desert. The Hebrew word is midbar. Now, verse 28, it's the second time Pharaoh gave permission and acknowledged Moses as God by asking him to entreat him. And that word is in Hebrew is atar, intercede or prayer. He said, go and pray to your God for me. You ever have anybody say, would you pray for me? Pray for me. But do they pray? Yeah. That happens a lot, don't it, Brother Stone? Uh -huh. Oh, pray for me. Uh -huh. But I'm not going to pray. That's right. Uh -huh. Wow. That's the, that's, that's the situation Pharaoh was in. Yeah. Don't pray for me, but I'm not going to follow your God. Uh, let me ask you one more thing before I close. What method did Moses use to get rid of the swarms of flies? Deep. <laughs> what method did he use? Come on. Zach knows. He asked God. How easy is that? You talk about having lice on your head? Ask God, you're going to get rid of them. You know what I'm saying? And then go to the store and buy something to do it with, right? Give you knowledge. <laughs> uh, Malachi 3 10 and 11 says that he will re rebuke the devourer. So anything that's come into your life where, where the devourer is stealing away from you what God has given you, God will rebuke the devourer if you'll just turn to Him and follow Him. And I'm going to close with that. Next week we're going to study uh, uh, some more on the flies. And uh, also the next, the next plague is going to be the livestock plague that we're going to discuss. And I'm getting way too fast on this stuff. Because it takes me a while to study this. I'm enjoying it, actually. Uh, because I'm digging into this a little farther than than just the Bible study, and I'm trying to find out who the Egyptians were. You know, it's just like when you're trying to reach a, a, a Muslim, don't believe what you heard on TV about them. You need, to, you need to either talk to them and find out what they believe in, get to know them, unless they kill you, you know. <laughs> Infidel! Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> but, but it is important to know who our enemies are, you know what I'm saying? And, and not, be, not be ignorant of their devices. So, so God has a way to, to inform you, and I believe that it is the Word of God and the Holy Spirit can direct you in all that you will say and do this week. God bless you all.